Welcome to the Hoof and Fang Podcast. I'm Kurt Graves. And I'm Masmetics. How are you doing? Good. We literally haven't seen each other in a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been gone. Mm-hmm. So, and we saved most of our catch up for this. Yes. So. <laughs> so we have to, like, every time I've reached for my phone to, like, talk about something, I'm like, nope, nope. Yeah, just wait. Nope, gotta wait. Just wait. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, what's new? What's going on? Oh, man. So, I was able to finally finish the um, dinosaur and uh, anthology short story that I like hated for a couple days. Sure, sure, sure. I, I have, that. Uh, fell back in love with it, finished it, knocked it out. Whew. I went for like completely no stakes, super fluffy brain rot, happy romance. So <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. It's, I mean, I was like, this thing is because it's so, it has to be so short. And I, right. I really struggle with writing anything under like 50,000 words. Mm. So I think the max cap was like 10 K and I was like, we're gonna do this like this uh, is insane so i was able to just if i made it less complicated it worked out great sure. i was like oh that's my problem so yeah i was able to finally finish that so now jess is working on it so i can get it edited in time and everything because of course i'm coming in like it's due by like december 1st and i'm like <laughs> it's october oh. so i've got to get it like edited and finished fast that seems like a good amount of time though. I think is so. it not I mean, it depends. I have not reached out to the editor I usually use to see if they have availability. So uh, I'm really banking on them being like available for me to like slip in a short story. So, and what do you look for from the editor? So I can really only super afford like really good line edits. So somebody to go in and check for grammar, repeating words, uh, misspellings, oh. just, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't, I, I wish I had all the money so I can get like developmental edits or somebody to do like really deep dive, getting their hands in the manuscript edits. Mm. But I use Jess and my beta readers for that. Sure. So me winging it. But yeah, for like any actual grammar stuff, I need a professional <laughs> to like help me with that because <laughs> I'm terrible. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So line edits are the grammar, the nitty gritty stuff. Yeah. So. Okay. And I think copy edits are like the layout structure of the sentence for print. I think I've, I've, it's been explained to me different ways, sure. but I think line edit specifically is like grammar and punctuation. And well, and I'm sure too, it's, it's who you're hiring and how mm -hmm. they define the work that they do. Right. But yeah, that, yeah. So much goes into it. Yeah. And there's so much. And you do. It's funny. That, so you're submitting this for an anthology. Mm -hmm. How does that work? So we're doing a charity one, so it's going to be, Great. so that makes so it gotta, really you gotta easy. you got to pay for the edits and you're yeah. not getting anything in return. Right. Yeah. Wow. So I'm, I'm not making Sounds any like money. starting a podcast. <laughs> you're not wrong. Maybe you should only be doing one of these things at a time. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, so it's, I, I mean, I get my, the rights back for it, I think after like 90 days or something, because oh, it's okay. like a limited run sure, sure, anthology sure. and then I can get it back and do whatever, but I'm like. It's they were really specific that it can't tie into other universes, so it's this standalone random dinosaur shifter. I'm like, I okay. guess I could like rewrite it and make it part of the relic universe after the fact. So, but will I do that? I don't know. I don't know. Who has time? So we'll see. But okay. I, I do like it. So I'm I'm hoping that the the anthology has other fantastic stories. Like I I know what everyone's picked for their dinosaurs and judged them so i'm excited <laughs> to see what they do <laughs> is this a, an up-and-coming genre i hope the so. dinosaur shifter i really want it to be a thing but also i'm an asshole about it so mm. like if if i pick up a dinosaur short story they need to be scientifically accurate i don't care if they're shifters or if they're aliens whatever i don't care but like the dinosaur part has to be accurate or i'm gonna get mad mm. so I don't know if I'm the best judge for it, but I would love to see very passionate paleontology people bring that like more dinosaur shifter stories or just uh, any type of prehistoric stuff. Like if somebody wants to do a whole ice age shifter romance, I'd be first in line for that shit. That sounds amazing. But have I not also heard you say that a lot of the science is still guessing? Yeah. I mean, that's what so there's still room for like, like making shit up. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I made up that my Albertosaurus has feathers. There's no evidence that they have feathers, but there's enough other Tyrannosaurus that have feathers that I felt comfortable just like adding that in there. And, but I even have like a little footnote at the end of my, of Gardens of Ghosts being mm -hmm. like, they probably didn't have feathers. I, I made that up, but like you Tyrannus has feathers. So I'm not like way out of the realm of possibilities. How do we know they had feathers? 
So the Uterinus fossils actually have feather imprints around their snout. Oh. Yeah. So it, it actually did have feathers, at least on its head, that they could- that they. And we found that in more than one fossil? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because it so wasn't just like a bird died against- <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like this one like weird One bird accident. was smushed against the face. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, they have feathers now. Yeah. Like, oh man. Yeah. No, no it's okay. multiple fossils so they can cross-reference it. But Got it. Yeah. But that would I mean, be it's good pretty that science great. took that into consideration. <laughs> yeah, that it's like this could be a dead bird under this mm-hmm. dinosaur's head. Oh yeah. my god, it's good. <laughs> well, it's nice to have that done. Yeah, I suppose. So I mean, except done. not done. It's the first draft the, is done. Yeah, the first draft is done. So at this point, it's just if Jess has some issues with stuff, I can tweak it, and then when if the betas have anything, I can tweak it. Unless I very very rarely run into one of those instances where I hand something over and huge massive rewrites have to happen, like. I think I've had maybe one or two instances where there's like a weird consistency error or like a plot point didn't quite make Mm. sense. So I had to walk that back and that sucked. That was a little bit of work, but I've never had anything so hated from all the betas that I'm like, oh, I have to scrap this whole thing or I have to like rewrite half of it or whatever. So yeah, this is going to be the one where they're like, um, I hated it. All of it, so just start over. Now we have a, a record <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because yeah. you said it into the universe on right. a microphone. Yeah. Oh uh, no, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm I'm better than fine. It's for a free charity anthology. They get right. what they get. Yeah, they get what they get. I think it's at least kind of funny. I chuckled Good. a couple times, Good. so it's well. And if people want, want to read your dinosaur shifter fiction, mm-hmm. uh, they have so much to choose from. Yeah, there's so. plenty. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the most productive i I was like i finished that but for the most part it's been day job and playing Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate. but i did finish a short story so and i know your short unfinished. story will be gay but are they all gay yeah they're all gay. great yeah and you i think it. it's mixed but i'll have to see if it's if it's all gay romance specifically or if there's any sapphic stuff i have okay. no idea so i just i was so excited about the animals they picked i didn't even ask about the romances <laughs> so that's where my brain is priorities yeah uh, what about you? You've had a very busy week. Oh, yeah. I'm yawning currently <laughs> because I'm still very tired. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I just got back from my second almost full week. This one was six days. Mm-hmm. Almost full week of being gone for a wedding. Mm-hmm. So I did my nephew's wedding for six days, came home for six days, left for another six days. That's crazy. And now I'm back and we're not going anywhere for the rest of the year. <laughs> like, Good. I'm so yeah i'm so tired i'm done with being away from my dogs Mm -hmm. i miss them so much uh and i'm i'm just done with traveling and and i'm poor now because i haven't been able to work for like most of the last month so like that that is going to catch up to me sooner rather than later (laughs) everyone's getting like (laughs) rocks for christmas or something just like yeah no no. it's it's gonna be (laughs) but you know there's there's always that delay when like you do work and then you invoice for it so like right i'll still get paid for like the next couple of weeks on projects i did a while ago yeah and, there's gonna uh, be a, and then there's gap. gonna be a gap where it was like <laughs> why why am i not why is there no money in my bank account and it's gonna be like oh yeah because you took like 12 days off mm-hmm. in the end of september and beginning of october right i digress gone for a long time still very tired mm-hmm. um had a sh- have a shit ton to get done now that i'm back. yeah trying to catch up. tons of work to do by the end of the year um, but it was a lovely trip. So this time I went to uh, my friend's wedding in Virginia. Mm-hmm. We actually flew into Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore is a great airport. Really? I recommend it. Nice. So we only got to see a little bit of it, but, uh, in talking to our friend in Baltimore, he was telling us more about it. And I was like, I'm excited to do Baltimore airport more often. Nice. Um, so, and, and Baltimore, you know, Baltimore, DC, they're all Philadelphia. Like they're all so close to one another Mm -hmm. so it really doesn't matter where you fly in you can get to where you're going we were going just outside of dc so we flew into baltimore i had dinner with uh, one of my husband's colleagues there uh got up the next day got a car and drove down to uh a part of virginia where the author tj clune lives exciting Mm -hmm. well exciting for me he's you've known him for a long time it's probably not like, oh my God. No, it actually was kind okay. of that because cool. this is the first time that I've been in the same place with TJ where we didn't have to talk in front of people. Nice. Like our okay. interaction wasn't public. It wasn't yeah. an interview. Um, 
And when I did the podcast uh, about his fandom, like he and I had had lots of conversations and some of them were recorded, but then parts were not. And so mm-hmm. I, I can't say we've never just had a conversation before. Uh, but this was the first time in person where it was just like, hey, dude, let's get together. We're going to chat. We're not yeah. going to talk about work. We're not going to talk about like yeah, writing or narrating or any of that. It's just going to be like, what's your life like? How's it going? Yeah. You know? And so, and so that was nice. Um, because he continues to be just like one of the nicest people. Uh, and I just enjoy working with him and I enjoy seeing him be successful. And because mm-hmm. he's so successful, I need to maintain that relationship. <laughs> It sounds so cynical to say out loud. (laughs) I think you have though before. Like, I don't think it's a secret. No, I mean, it would be different if I didn't actually like him as a human being, because then I probably wouldn't be as invested. Right. I certainly wouldn't be like emailing to be like, hey, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods. You want to hang out? Yeah. If I didn't actually like him as a person. But also it would be stupid to like act like having him as a friend it doesn't matter to me right like, yeah of course it does he's yeah. a big deal he, in publishing right he's a good connection to have he's a good friend right? yeah yeah for sure like, who would have thought all those years ago when i first started working at, with him and it was meeting him at grl for the first time mm-hmm. that like this is where we'd be where we we'd be at lunch mm-hmm. you know in the middle of virginia chatting and he and he just ran casually mentions that they're going to be releasing the uh, cover and name of the sequel to the house in the cerulean sea on good morning america next week well that's exciting right that's awesome so as of this recording it mm-hmm. has already happened so okay. i know for sure that by the time this comes out on friday it has happened so okay you can so go it's not see. like spoiling anything no okay. no no uh but yeah i mean i got to find out that that's officially happening i got to see the book cover because he's like you gotta see the cover art and he's pulling out his phone and showing and it's like that's awesome Getting to celebrate him in that way is, it's just such a unique and fun experience Yeah. after, after all these years. So, mm-hmm. uh, also as a part of this trip, I got, I didn't even actually see it. My husband did, but he saw Wolf Song and Raven Song in an airport bookstore. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's a good feeling. For people who are in publishing, like the airport bookstore is like, you've achieved a certain level. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because they okay. only put in like the most popular that like makes sense because they want to try to get those sales. People yeah. are only there for a heartbeat. There's no indie stuff. There's no up and comers. There's they don't take chances. They just put like the most popular books in airport bookstores. That makes sense. Yeah. So by the time you're narrating books that are in an airport bookstore, it's like, ooh, yeah, that's it's exciting. like you've made it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. And so I, again, I didn't see it. My yeah. friend Joel was actually flying the week before, and he sent me a picture of Wolf Song. <laughs> That's in, awesome. Uh, several TJ books, um, but Wolf Song was the one in the picture in an airport that he was at. I think he was in New York, mm. uh, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm flying next week. I'll see." And sure enough, John was checking out the bookstore and saw it and snapped a pic and sent it to me. And that's awesome. Then we saw it again at a different. It's just yeah, yeah. It's cool. um, it's a milestone uh, that has nothing to do with anything I've gained in the last seven years because it's literally the first book I ever narrated it's just that he happened to get popular so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that damn book (laughs) yeah it just it just keeps keeps trucking (laughs) um but yeah so i mean just getting to like chat and catch up and know a little bit about what's going on in his life and Mm -hmm. and not have that the time clock clicking ticking down because even when we've gotten together like at conferences or at like the Clunatics gatherings, I am aware of the fact that he, his time is for everybody. Right. You know, that he, like all of us, he has a limited capacity for interacting with people who are fans. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a weird relationship to have with somebody. Like you don't really know them, but you owe them a lot because they're so devoted to you. Right. Um, Takes a lot of energy out. And so it's, it's always been one of those things where it's like, I'm so happy to be here. So good to see you. But then almost immediately, my job became to be like one of the other people to entertain people. Yeah, that's a lot. So that when they weren't talking to him, they could feel like they were talking mm-hmm. to somebody, TJ Clune adjacent. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so when we've done the Clunatics gatherings, like the narrators have done readings and stuff like that. And all of that is to like make it worth it, I think, yeah. for the people who show up, mm-hmm. uh, knowing that he can't 
all. Yeah, no. You know? I mean, I, I get exhausted just doing signings for people who are like, I like your books. I'm mm-hmm. like, thanks. And then they're gone. Right. I can't imagine like having a whole like event around that interaction. I would die. Right. <laughs> like, you know, like that's just so many. That's so much peopling. Right. Concentrated for a long amount of time. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's a lot. So, so yeah, it was just nice to sit down. And also there was uh, Lynn Schmitz, who has hosted the Clunatics gatherings before. She's nice. in Virginia. Um, you know, they live somewhat close together. So they've been, she's one of his beta readers. And they just have such a cute, close relationship. So yeah, that's awesome. And I love Lynn. Lynn has been so kind to me and John as well in the past. Mm-hmm. So it was nice to catch up with her as well. Cool. Um, but yeah, so that, was my, that was my lunch with uh, best-selling author T.J. Clune. <laughs> Um, and then, oh, I really like the, the dumbest part of the whole lunch was just my my husband and TJ got to talking about Star Wars, specifically the, uh, the, the live action shows that they've been doing on Disney plus. And they just, that was, that was, they had a whole (laughs) half an hour of just going back and forth about Star Wars. And Lynn Mm. and I would just kind of give each other looks like. And then they'd mention one that I'd actually watched and I'd be like, now I talk. Yeah, I can contribute. But I only yeah. know the one thing, so. Yeah, that uh, makes it tough. Well, especially with Star Wars, like Star Wars fandom and the universe and the Star Wars junkies, like it's a totally different breed of nerd. Uh, we've Our mutual friend Adam is like mm-hmm. that. He's he's a Star Wars dude. So like if you get him talking about that, it's a thing, right? Yeah. So And like, I'm like you, like I, I know certain things, like I've seen the movies, I think I've seen seen mandalorian but i haven't watched any of the other ones mm. so like if somebody talks about that i can be like i know that but everything else have you I'm seen like, all three know. seasons of the mandalorian mm-hmm. okay yeah so there you go you've watched more mandalorian than i have hey there you go yeah i, I have that but I, like mm-hmm. i haven't watched any of the other ones so i feel like almost like a little kid or like a little sibling at those kind of tables where i'm like i know one character and they're like that's nice that's good <laughs> they that's move on. good yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah they were going deep on all of the live action shows as well as like the animated series and how they interconnect and yeah it's a lot that's a lot I, some deep lore yeah, man yeah so that was that was my husband and tj nerding out over things that i <laughs> i didn't really understand yeah that's um, fair. but that was great and then we drove Closer to the D.C. area for my friend's wedding, mm-hmm. um, which, as I mentioned last week, was going to be and was um, part Indian wedding and part like traditional Western wedding. Sure. And oh, boy, part of why I am so damn tired is that that was a whole lot of wedding. Yeah. And I can't imagine the people who do this properly in India who just do it for like days Oh my days god. Days and days. Yeah. Um, because we had on Saturday we had uh the Hindu ceremony in the morning. Um and like that was really cool just to experience something different, mm-hmm. you know? And also uh how welcoming and open and like actually improv like the whole thing was. Really? <laughs> like so like it was it was not nearly as like solemn or uh like strict as Mm. western weddings are okay like there was a priest and there was a cool setup that and they were up there and they had the certain things they had to do but um you know at a certain point the host the person who was hosting it just got up and started saying like what's going on and translating for people who may not know um and there was a lot of like okay now do this no 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 like this okay yep uh uh-huh and like people were getting up and walking around the altar and taking pictures and like getting close and like That's awesome. chatting. And I was yeah. just like, this is so not the atmosphere I expected from any kind of wedding celebration. Yeah. But it was way cool. Like we should do more like, like, yeah, it that makes more fun. sense. It yeah. did make, yeah, it was more fun that way. Yeah. Cause people could actually like get, instead of just like sitting quietly and listening yeah. and watching. You're like contributing. You're yes. part of the wedding. Yes. So. I like that. So we did that. And then we had a nice long break in between the two uh, in which John went to the Air and Space Museum, like the few, the one that's not in the Smithsonian, but the one that's like the airfield mm-hmm. uh, where he got to see the X-Men's Blackbird jet. Oh, that's which, cool. Like, oh, if I knew that was there, maybe I would have gone. Yeah. Uh, and the space shuttle and some other things. And he had a great time. But I stayed in the room and I did some podcast stuff. Nice. And I practiced my ceremony for the next day but then 
Saturday night, it's what's called the Sangeet, which again, can usually go much, much longer. This was from six to midnight. Okay. But it's when they do all of like their speeches and their dances and it is like a whole production. And it went on. Yeah. For a while. It really did. <laughs> okay. And then they're, they're supposed to be then dancing for like hours afterwards. Well, yeah. it went a little late. And so there was maybe like an hour, hour and a half of dancing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, if, if I went into this wedding thinking that I would need to be careful about what I said, like, Ooh, maybe there are some topics I shouldn't talk about or like, you know, don't be my sarcastic asshole self after the Sangeet, I was like, Oh, I'm fine. Oh, great. Like, they really razz each other. Like, they go in hard. There were, that's like, great. The speeches were basically roasts. I was like, this is great. Yeah, that's um, fantastic. So, yeah, so that, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then Sunday was my turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the ceremony wasn't until three. So, John and I went to Old Town in Alexandria. It's on the waterfront right on the Potomac. And it's just this, like, charming old town. And that's what the neighborhood's called and there's Great. some shops and we walked and talked and did that came back to the hotel got dressed did the ceremony went off almost without a hitch oh there were some technology issues it's mm-hmm. it's an outdoor wedding and there was only like one tiny speaker and gotcha. like even for me like it was tough for people to hear me with me like using like my to the back of the house voice yeah into this little microphone that's like this tinny little speaker boo that kind of sucks um so that the sound was not great and then there were people playing music like under some of it and like of course they had the good speaker naturally Mm -hmm. so it's like anytime they were playing you couldn't hear a darn thing Mm -hmm. tech you got to think about tech Mm -hmm. and this and this is not my friend's fault by the way because they had a wedding planner Mm. who she's never gonna find this she was kind of a pill Oh, really? We didn't get along. <laughs> she was trying to tell me how to project. And I'm like, lady. You're like, you don't even know who you're talking to right now. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you can't. No. Oh. Don't even. <laughs> like, she's like, no, no, no. You got to do it like this. And she like got behind the mic and tried to demonstrate how, how to project. And I'm like. Thank no. you. <laughs> I'm like, no. Okay. And then she was like, well, I'll just stand in the back and I'll like signal you if I can't hear you. And I was like, no. Yeah. No, you won't. I was like, the last thing I need is somebody like miming at me from the back yeah when you're trying to do something when there's as nothing important. i'll be able to do about it because i'm yeah. telling you if you can't hear me it's not because i'm not projecting at the absolute max right it's because we have one tinny speaker yeah and that's as far as it goes and that's not on me mm-hmm. so i was like absolutely do not do that and the most important part which is that like the two people who actually need to hear what i'm saying are right mm-hmm. in front of me right everybody else is a bonus so yeah, if they can't hear you, I don't care. If they can't hear you, <laughs> tell them to come closer. Yeah. You know, there's only like five rows of things, but it was kind of, and it was kind of like up a hill. So it's like, yeah, it wasn't an ideal sound situation. And there were sirens and cars because you're outside and there's wind, mm-hmm. you know, so it happens. Yeah. Um, but I will report my part was a huge success. Great. I got good. a ton of compliments afterwards. Um, so I am very confident that I did a good job. I'm good. so happy to have it done. Yeah. And now I'm done forever. You're done forever. You're not doing that ever again. Kind I, of thing? I really don't want to do any more wedding stuff for friends. Yeah. Like this was like my last good friend getting married. And I'm like, great. Mm-hmm. I've done them all. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. We're finished. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, for sure. Like that phase of my life is behind me. If any of yeah. my friends now want to get divorced and remarried, God bless them. But we don't need to do the whole thing, do we? I, I mean, Maybe I'm a jerk, but I'd be like, no, I went to the first one. Like, oh, I'll go. Yeah, I just don't, don't want to like, wanna, like stand up. I don't want to sing. I don't want to officiate. I don't want to mm-hmm. read. Yeah, like all these things that I've done for weddings for like all of my friends over the years. Like at this point, I'm like, no, I'm just I'm not being like a bridesmaid. I'm, I'm just not doing done. any of that shit. I'm just done. I'm past yeah. it. Yeah, so, same. Yeah, I, I I would be interested to hear from listeners how they feel about. <laughs> wedding participation is that just me does anyone really like it i mean i i've gone to a handful of weddings and i've only really contributed like been actively a part of i think really one jess's wedding and i was like beyond happy to be there Mm. i was her uh, one of her bridesmaids great i would not do that again like 
she's my favorite person. And I was like, that was fun. I will never do this again. Like I hated having to just. You just had to do the one. Yeah. Yeah. I, That's it. I, yeah. I got lucky, I guess. Like, one. Yeah. Cause my other best, best friend who's in Japan. I mean, I don't think she's ever getting married. If she does great, she can fly my ass out there, but mm-hmm. I mean, she's in Japan, but, um, yeah, I think it was just Jess. Everybody else I knew either were already married or aren't getting married. So I got lucky. It was just her. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had a hiatus for a while now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, there were, there was a while there where I was like in two weddings a year for like 10 years. My God. Like either maybe in some way, shape or form again, reader, <laughs> sing. Well, and like I also, as a singer, like would get hired to do oh, weddings that, that of people sense. I didn't even know. So I'm not counting that. Okay. But like when friends ask you to sing for a wedding or to officiate or to read or to stand mm-hmm. up, like, yeah, there was at least two a year for like Oof. a solid 10 years. Or these people that you knew when you were younger, like in college yeah, kind of thing. Some. Okay. okay. Yeah. I stood up in my friend John's wedding after only knowing him for a couple of years. Okay. And I was like, really? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was right. like, I love you, man. We're good friends. I was like, yeah. uh, seems like a lot. <laughs> 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 oh, this is my friend, John. Oh, I don't know if I've ever talked about this publicly. This is my friend, John, whose brother is uh, the Twitch streamer Ninja. Oh, that's right. So uh, it was actually at his bachelor party that I can say that I, I slept with Ninja. Because we we shared a, there were like two queen size beds in this hotel room, and there were yeah. like four people per bed. And I I happened to know that Tyler That's was funny. in mine. <laughs> I was That's like, hilarious. and now he's famous. Yeah. So he's the most famous person I've ever shared a bed with. It's a great sound bite. <laughs> it yeah, it could sound salacious, but it's super not. Yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly clear. <laughs> in fact. I even left early that night because I was like, I'm old and tired. Goodbye. And I was already <laughs> asleep by the time everybody else came back to the hotel room That's and like hilarious. crawled in bed. So yeah. I don't even really remember it. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, me and weddings. I hope. I hope. You're just done. I am just an, a member of the crowd from yeah. now on. And I will celebrate that way. Yeah. But also if we could stop with the big weddings. Again, just again, at my age, like if I know younger people, like mm-hmm. my other nephews getting married now next summer, we'll go. They're young. Have a sure. big wedding, of course. Yeah. But like from my friends, my people, mm-hmm. if we're getting to the having the wedding part, like let's yeah, let's be adults back. about it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just you know? make it chill. Mm-hmm. No bells and whistles. Not like 50 other things happening during the ceremony. Right. Like just. Right. Relax. Because that that honestly in the Western tradition is all just nonsense we've made up. Mm-hmm. Uh in other traditions, as I now know, especially in Indian traditions, like there are lots of significant religious portions that matter to the community and to, yeah. and to the family. We just do it to show off. Mm-hmm. It kind of feels that way. And I don't want to like disparage people's weddings and stuff, but it's all just a huge show of how much money you can spend mm-hmm. or like what your family can afford. Or can't. Yeah. Or can't. Often it's what you yeah. can't afford. Yeah. But like you feel like you have to do it for people. Right. You're starting your your journey, your partnership in debt. Yeah. That's awful. Why why do we normalize that? That sucks. Mm-hmm. Like I've I have siblings that kicked off their wedding with like ten thousand dollars in debt because they had to pay for the wedding and then the honeymoon and like all mm-hmm. this other crazy shit. It's like, why? Why'd you do that? Right. Like nobody asked you to do that. So yeah. No. I'm not a fan. Right. Well, and as far as like wedding gifts are concerned, if you're going to a wedding too, like I feel like this is common knowledge, but maybe it's not. But like if you know you're going to a big fancy wedding, mm-hmm. you need to up your gift value. Because if you as the guest are not showing up and giving a gift that is at least the value they spent on you mm-hmm. to have you at their wedding, then they're coming out in the red. Yeah. You know? And see that's so other at pressure least too. Invest in yeah. or just don't go. Yeah, there you go. I'll be like, I'm poor. Sorry. (laughs) Oh, like, oh, that venue, they're probably spending 50 bucks a plate per person. And I don't feel like giving these people $100. Let's just not go. Hey, man. You know, that's that's valid. because You got to pay them bills. You know, (laughs) you know, I mean, you would assume if you're going to somebody's wedding, you want them to come out ahead. Yeah. So that's fair. You know, it's not that it's you got to think about Mm -hmm. what are they spending? What's my obligation? Yeah. And then decide if it's really worth it. 
I mean, and sometimes you can love somebody to death and not have any damn money. Like true. That happens. So true. Yeah. Like well, and we had a pretty small wedding. Yeah. Like all things considered. Uh I think it was maybe like 150 people, maybe less. Okay. Uh but like as I've said many times now, like because I think I joked about this at, at the last <laughs> wedding I went to, I met like the groom's mom's cousin's girlfriend from Canada. Oh my and, god. Like, that's just not yeah. What I did, like my cousins weren't invited to my wedding, not because I don't appreciate and know them as human beings, but because we're not close. Yeah. So like there were just other people I'd rather invite than people who I have known my whole life. But like we don't hang out. It. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like so like that was one thing. And like even friends who like I was in their wedding, mm -hmm. if we hadn't talked in so long that John hadn't met them yet, they weren't invited to my wedding. Right. <laughs> it's like. No offense, love you. So glad to have participated in your wedding, but like, yeah, that's, we've momentarily fallen out of touch, and uh, I didn't want to introduce people to my husband at my wedding. Yeah, for sure. Like, oh, you've never met this person who's apparently important enough to me to have here. Yeah, what? Right? Yeah, that made no sense to me. Makes sense. But I'm an asshole, so I don't know. Tell me how I'm wrong, folks. Tell me how wrong I am. Yeah, we we appreciate the feedback. Just. <laughs> Pop in and call us assholes. That's fine. <laughs> yes. So there is no guest this week. This is going to happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. We're doing more interviews. Yeah. They're in the books, but like we're not always going to have a guest. Uh, but I thought instead of having a guest this week, we would play a game. Yeah, I see that. And mm -hmm. I'm already like, uh oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, remember earlier when I was like, oh, do you have any ideas or things you want to talk about? And you were like, no. I was like, well. Then she's going along with whatever I came up with. That'll right. never happen again. Oh my God. <laughs> Next time I have. Yeah, I'm going to have a list of things yeah. to talk about. Anything you want to talk about? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. I have a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play Guess That Gay Book. All right. So uh, this is inspired by things I've seen on TikTok, especially librarians who I follow are doing this on TikTok, where they're like, hey, I read this book about blah. And okay. then like people have to find it in like a short amount of time. Ooh. We're not doing it that way. Okay, uh, we're kind of mixing that with like 20 questions, except there's not a limit on questions. Okay. So I am thinking of a queer title. Okay. That's all you know up front. Okay. It is a queer title. You are going to guess the title. Okay. And the rules are you can ask yes or no questions, and I will answer honestly. Um, and you can use any resources you want to do research. So your computer's in front of you. Mm -hmm. You can start Googling. You can... Do whatever you want to do. Okay. So. This is going to be interesting because usually when I play this game with Alex, who is an asshole, oh. um, I will, the first thing I always ask is, have I seen it? Because it's usually a movie. Uh. I'm like, have I seen it? And he's always like, I don't know. And it, usually I have, and he's just a jerk. Oh. So. <laughs> well. But I can't. I'm not you living don't know with what you. Right, so, so I don't no know way. what you've seen and not yeah, seen. So like the, I'm always like, have I seen it? So the first thing I was, I wanted to ask you was, have I read it? I was like, well, how would he know I don't that? know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that that may be an honest question. answer to to a yes or no question, yeah. which like some people are real sticklers about that. But like you can ask a yes or no question, and my answer might be I don't know. Or mm -hmm. yeah, you've I still mean, asked the question properly, and I'm still answering honestly. Right. Okay. Here we go. Um, and please play along at home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> See if you can figure it out soon. They're gonna get like th three <laughs> questions in and nail it, and I'm still gonna be like I don't know. Um. Okay. Let's start with is the author. Male? No. The author female? Yes. To the best of my knowledge. Right. Well, to the best of our... I was going to mm. go to non-binary next if I struck out. Um, okay. Has the book been out less than five years? Let's see. Yes. To keep up with all my train of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Is it a romance? Is it a gay romance? Yes. With boys? Yes. Okay. Is it contemporary? Yes. What's fun about this is I know there are people listening right now who are like shouting at their podcast player, like what questions they would be asking. <laughs> I next. know, right? I'm like trying to think of good ones to kind of steer it. Okay. I'm guessing since you said it's contemporary, there's it's not historical. No. It is not historical. No magic? Correct. 
Is it by anyone we've had on the show so far? No. Is it something you narrated? Yes. Ah, now I'm going to cheat. I was wondering how long. <laughs> <laughs> That narrows it down to a couple hundred titles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it didn't do myself a ton of favors, but it did narrow it down mm-hmm. a little bit. It, it didn't narrow it down. <laughs> Not enough. No, Not no, enough. No. There's you're so gonna, many fucking You're going to have contemporary. to ask more. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a holiday romance? No. Good question, though. She has slunk down in her chair. <laughs> Thank you for narrating everything that's happening here. Well, it's a podcast. They can't see you. <laughs> well, there's some video. That's true. Although I just realized that the whole, like, we meticulously frame things and I'm flipping around in my chair trying to concentrate. Meh. So, you know. Okay. Does, hmm, being yes or no always makes it tricky. Is there a murder plot? No. There's so many books here. Does it have to do with rock stars? No. What about conventions? No. Lawyers? No. Waiters? I'm going off of <laughs> some so You're just, going off you're just, just looking covers. at book covers? <laughs> well, because I'm like, oh, this is... No, not okay. waiters. Hmm. There's so many just boy chests. It's hard for me to guess some of these. When I'm skipping through, I'm like, bear, fox, bear, skeleton. Nope, nope, nope. Is it, does it have anything to do with, like, a biker gang? No. What about football? No. But sports? Yes. Ah, okay. Um, is it a hockey romance? No. Football and hockey. What other sports exist? Um, that is not a yes or no question. <laughs> I'm musing out loud. So my brain's like, that's all the sports. I'm like, is it? Um, what, what are, well, okay, so not hockey, not football. What else do people like that's sports related? Um, rugby? No. Is that a thing? Okay. Um, it is a thing. It is no, a thing. Is- I'm just I'm trying to think of like the trends that I always see. Mm. I know I know those are the big ones. Well, maybe not rugby, but those two for sure. Uh, tennis? Yes. Tennis. Okay. Okay. If there's like a hundred of these, I'm going to get mad. Oh, is it love match? Yes. Yeah. You got it. I did it. It just took a lot of slumping and staring at the screen going, (laughs) I don't know. Why is this so hard? (laughs) Well, because you're trying to call down further and further and further and further until you have the answer. It's tricky. So that was our first game of Guess That Gay Book. <laughs> yeah, it's a love match by Kara Andrews. It looks cute. It is. Fun fact, this is the only book that I ever got no pickups on. Really? I don't think that's because it is free of errors, but for some reason, no pickups. Oh, <laughs> so okay. I am not I do not I, I do not have enough hubris to think like but you just there were no mistakes. It. They just obviously didn't care enough about the mistakes to have them be corrected. Yeah. Whatever well, they might be. Yeah. I'm sure there were, if there were any very tiny and maybe didn't super matter. But. Yeah. Or it was a human proofing it and sometimes humans just miss things. That's true. That happens too. So mm-hmm. uh, no book is perfect. No audio book is perfect. Keep that in mind. But yep. um, one thing that was fun about this book though is there were a lot of accents because they, the two guys who, spoiler alert, fall in love. Um, <laughs> no way. Yeah, they are professional tennis players. And so they are going all over the world to play in professional tournaments and they're playing against people from all over the world. So there was, Oh, that's fun. Yeah, there were some fun international accents in that Do book. you like doing a ton of accents in books? Like, does it just mi- mix it up, make um, it fun? I'm, my feelings are changing about accents. I used to really love doing them because they come, I, I have an ear for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they do seem to come pretty easily to me. Uh, more and more at this point in my career, I... I like identifying with the person I'm narrating for. And so I try to find more of myself and less about the trappings of a character that are vastly different from me. I love them for side characters because to have to just be like, 
what is this person going to sound like? Oh, they're German. Great. They have a German accent. I don't, yeah. Done. Great. You know, I don't yeah. like, it doesn't require me to think long and hard about how do I make this character sound distinct from the others? Mm hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. But yeah. And plus, like, audiobooks have become so not easy, but accessible, I guess, as like people can do it from their home. Like, you don't have to go into a studio to do it. So, right. there's a part of me now that is like, well, if the character needs a German accent, like, Hire a German dude. You yeah, know? yeah, easier to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just let somebody with an accent narrate the book. Yeah, <laughs> you know, makes sense. So, yeah. So again, for for individual characters, still love doing accents, and that's what this was. Like, they're Americans, but like they'll pop up, and there will be like a Russian or an Australian or something. Cool. And I was like, that's yeah, that's fun. Yeah, just a little challenge here and there as you as you go through, just to keep things interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. Fun. Uh, if you haven't, you can check out Love Match. It's a gay romance by Kira Andrews. And uh, keep your eyes peeled, Kira Andrews. I also just did one of my holiday books. So that should be oh fun coming out. The Christmas veto at some point. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. The book is done. I don't. I don't remember when. <laughs> this was like a pre-order situation. So like, oh, gotcha. I don't know if the book has come out yet. I should really keep track of that stuff. I mean, you do a lot of audiobooks, though. Like uh, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Tough to keep up with every single release that comes out, especially when it's, you know, you record it and then people will do pre-orders and releases like months later. Mm -hmm. Hell. Usually I get tagged when things come out, so I'm going to assume it hasn't come out yet. It hasn't come out yet. <laughs> it's like you just came out of a wedding or something. Yeah. Just come out of a wedding. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, did you enjoy the game now that it's over? Yeah. You feel proud? Yeah, okay, a little good. bit, because I'm usually, again, very bad at these, so... I'm I'm happy I was able to pick it, and I wasn't just panicking, and it's just audio of me going, I don't know. Right. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, buyer beware, because if uh, we need to fill some time in the future, I might come up with another game. Hey, we love go. it. All right. Uh, so just a reminder, if you listened last week, you know that our October audiobook of the month is Prisoner by G.G. DeGram. I am going to start recording that. If not this afternoon, first thing tomorrow morning. Nice, <laughs> so awesome. We begin. We begin our second audiobook, and that will be released on audio on October 27th. It will automatically be delivered to our dear listener patrons and our Patreon. Uh, sign up if you have not already. We mm -hmm. would love to have you there. We are over halfway to our goal, our first goal post of 100 listeners. Yeah. We have over 50. We're so excited. Um, please join us in Patreon. We're having a great time over there. They got to find out about my lunch with TJ before anybody else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those pictures you know, are awesome. We're, he looks genuinely so happy. We were. We had yeah. just had a great lunch. So yeah, it was it was a fun time. Uh, so yeah, if you want some inside information, that's that's the place to be. Uh, yeah, and then we of course always want to encourage people to reach out to us via social media. Uh, or you can email us at hoofandfangpodcast at gmail.com. Our website is hoofandfangpodcast.com. And from there, you can get a link to our Patreon page, which mm -hmm. is just called Hoof and Fang. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, support the podcast, get access to bonus content. There's more coming your way mm -hmm. uh, because we are continuing our recap of the Animorphs series. Yes. And uh, more things coming down the line. For sure. Great. So. Everybody have a lovely week. We will be back next week and uh, we will have our interview with author Gigi DeGram, the author of Prisoner. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right. Bye bye. Bye.